Hi, I'm Vivian Phillips, and I get a chance to sit here with Mark Bamuti Joseph, who hey. is an artist, among many other things. But we're at the University of Washington campus today and talking a little bit about your upcoming presentation, Carnival of the Animals. Yes. Now, this is a, a piece that was done in, what, 1886, something like that? Um, Somewhere yeah, around in there. Early, early 20th century, something like that. Yeah. 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 Um, and you are re or have reimagined this yeah. piece of orchestral music, yes. which we all know mm -hmm. and are familiar with. Yes. We just don't know that we're listening to Carnival of the Animals exactly. most of the time. Exactly. So, Mark, what what brought you to this reimagining of Carnival of the Animals? My my first exposure was through a micro commission through the National Gallery of the Arts. This is maybe back in 2017, 2018, something like that. Um, they were hosting a chamber performance and um, it, it is traditional for um, a, a narrator to be present, a, a moderator of, of some sorts. The, I think maybe among the more famous of these is John Lithgow. Mm. And you know, the, the role of this person is kind of to be like carnival barker, mm -hmm. ringmaster, mm -hmm. you know, like you think of it as the carnival of the animals. Well, you know, is it the lion tamer? Who, who's, who's shouting the animals out? So um, uh, there, there are 14 mini suites in this composition. Each of the suites um, responds to a, a, different, a different animal. animal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this moderator, this interlocutor, you know, sometimes is played by an anchor person mm -hmm. and, and they typically do these asides. Well, you know, given that task, I didn't want to do kind of like funny um, or um, somehow um, kind of disconnected or whimsical um, descriptions of the animals. I didn't just want to be a bridge from kind of one whimsical take to another. I often say that art isn't a bridge, it's a battery. And so what are you pounding? It's the charge. It is the charge, uh -huh. right? So um, given that this was at the National Gallery of the Arts and we were in Washington, D.C., um, my take was to do um, political commentary and to think of the animals of the political jungle. Um, so I wrote a piece about a monarch butterfly um, to um, consider immigration mm. and migration. Um, I wrote a piece about the great white shark to think about gun violence um, and the predatory nature, the insatiability of um, a shark and their thirst for blood. Um, I, I managed to do this in a way that was incisive but not necessarily dark. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, uh, fast forward a few years later, um, I, I wanted to take that same premise, that same idea, and expand it to a full evening, this time with the great Wendy Whalen. So wait, yeah. when you did it before, mm -hmm. what was your form? You It, it was simply spoken word? Exactly. And music? Exact, exactly. So okay. it was a chamber orchestra, and like, you know, every three or four movements, I would take the microphone, I would do a poem, and then they would resume with, okay. the, you know, um, with the playing. Um, but I like the premise enough that I thought it could be a full evening of theater um, reimagined. Um, at, at the time that I was first commissioned, um, I was living in Oakland, California, but now I happen to live in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. I, I work at the Kennedy Center, and I was in D.C. throughout um, the hardest days of um, the pandemic, of the COVID-19 um, pandemic, and I was in my apartment in Washington, D.C. on January 6th. Yeah. And I had this thought about my personal safety on that day, maybe as we all did. It yeah. wasn't just the democracy that was in danger, but in this case, I thought that I was you know, safe in my apartment until I realized that if they could breach the structure of the Capitol, they could- <laughs> They could certainly they could, they, they, they could get your into apartment. apartment 1008, yeah, exactly. <laughs> easy, right? Yeah, easy. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so the Carnival of the Animals is about a person in the midst of um, this assault on our government mm -hmm. who decides to join the 
animals that invaded the capital. I see. And to think of um, the people who did, less in terms of um, barbaric terms, but really trying to understand the, the, the figurative and also philosophical impulses that um, our government is built around mm -hmm. and how we are all animals inside of an ecosystem, inside of a body politic. Um, it's performed with um, a, a chamber orchestra, just um, a, a quartet really, mm -hmm. two pianos, a cello, a violin, um, Wendy Whalen, a world-class dancer, you know, former, former principal dancer of the New York City Ballet, now the associate artistic director yes. uh, at New York City Ballet, is my compatriot on stage. Um, and the, the work um, kind of migrates itself, to use another animal term, over the course of the day. That's what the piece does, I think, more than anything else. It asks questions, as is my artistic impulse. It, it asks questions of us, of our democracy, and um, how it is that we want to live. And I'm curious about how your artistic process with Wendy Whalen mm -hmm. and Francesca Harper, mm -hmm. how that all evolved over time. Yeah. And when did the commission for the work actually happen? Michelle Witt and the team at the Mini Center, um, you know, we'd been talking through 2020 and through 21. Um, and so we were in deep discourse about some more institutional issues. Um, we had agreed together to explore the idea of systemic allyship. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And you know, by that point, um, the work was already in process. So the, the relationship with the Meany Center was percolating. Um, okay. And this piece was percolating. At the time, we thought you know, maybe there'd be a different um, kind of lead presenter. But I think as my relationship with the Meany Center developed and matured, we thought that um, maybe there could be multiple kind of um, vectors of practice where we could have a relationship that was both institutional and also that was um, a very clear kind of um, investment and advocacy of, um, of my creative work. So that really came to pass like in 22. Um, and then we decided in the calendar year 23 that um, that this would be the site of the world premiere. So you're an artistic partner yes. at UW-Mini, and I guess what I'm hearing you say, just to clarify, is that your partnership with Mini is performance-based, but it is also institutional, educational, and community-based. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of what we've been talking about is not limiting the artist's body to artist products, that the, the artist as intellect, as interlocutor, as convener, um, as disruptor is just as important as the artist as entertainer. Yeah. And the, the methodology and modalities that artists deploy um, are wider, I think, in, in scope than the time-based architecture of a dance mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. a, you know, or a song or, you know, or whatever it is. So, um, you know, I really credit the Meany Center for understanding that. I want to go back a little bit to the creative process yeah. um, with you and Wendy and Francesca yeah. and it all happening on Zoom, I'm yeah. assuming, for the most part. Uh, the, the first part of it, for sure. The first yeah. half of it, maybe, yeah. So can you give us a bit of an overview of how that works? You know, you, yeah. you have a regular Zoom meeting, you talk about the concept, mm -hmm. then how does the movement and the spoken word, how does that all come together? Yeah, um, it's still really iterative. Um, you know, but the early part of the process when we couldn't physically touch each other or you know, it, it didn't feel um, you know, quite right to be in, in close proximity to one another was I, I would deliver a poem, uh, Francesco would um, kind of develop some choreography, 
and from six feet apart and or more, Francesca and Wendy, masked, would get together, you know, learn movement. But Francesca is the artistic director of Ailey 2. Yeah. Um, Wendy is the associate artistic director of, um, of the ballet. I'm in DC at the Kennedy Center, and so all of us are also really busy. Those early processes that were, I would deliver a poem, I would record the poem mm -hmm. on my phone, I would send that recording, uh, you, you know, a, a lot of that was done without human touch. Um, but what we ultimately bring to the Mimi Center is as grand as the inquiry and as close as, you know, two humans in time.